Hello, it's Dan again. And if you might've noticed, I was just running onto the screen because what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna do a running video. Yeah, I'm gonna do a video talking about running, specifically my experience with the, the Pete Fitzinger 1270 marathon training plan. And the reason I'm doing that, because it's just something something I wanna talk about, my, my recent uh, experience with that and running the 2022 Boston Marathon. Now, I'm not trying to turn this channel into a running YouTube channel. I prefer to focus on what I've been usually focusing on, like outdoor gear and backpacking subjects. But I just felt like making this video because I didn't find too much out there in the YouTube verse about uh, people's personal experience with the, the Fitzinger Advanced Marathoning training plans. I felt like I put something out there and talk about what it was like for me. So that's what this video is going to be about. And I'm probably going to make a follow-up video discussing... Uh, what it was like for me to, to run the Boston Marathon and how the plan ended up working out for me in the end. So that's what this is going to be about. And let's get on to part two. Now it's time for part two of the video. And what I am going to discuss in this is just a general overview of the, the Fitzinger 1270 training plan. But I'm not going to go into too much detail because I don't want to do any like copyright infringement. And I also want you to encourage, encourage you to buy the book and read it yourself, the advanced marathoning book, and not just follow the plan, but read the book and all the other stuff. So what I just want to discuss very generally is what, what the, the whole tra training plan was about. And this was the 12-week version, getting up to 70 miles a week, and there's also the 18-week version. And I originally would have done the 18-week version, but I thought I had an injury and I didn't run when I could have started the 18-week version. So I ended up just building up a base and then jumping into the 12 week version. So I'm discussing the 12 week version going up to 70 miles per week. Now it's broken up into basically three phases. First one, you're building mileage. The second one, you're getting into some marathon paces, half marathon paces. And the third one, you're sharpening up, you're doing VO2 max stuff in taper. Now the type of runs that you do, this is what I liked about the plan was the variety of runs and sort of the simplicity of the runs and also be, being able to do it in singles. I was able to fit that more to my schedule than having to do doubles all the time. So I was able to do most of the run in singles. And it's it's some pretty simple standard runs. You know, you do your long runs with some of those at marathon pace. You do your regular runs and you might throw strides into those. You do recovery runs, and you really want to take those at a slower pace than what you're used to, which might be difficult for competitive people. So I kind of, I would do a lot of those with friends and, and just conversational pace and take it easy. And then you also have things like your tempo runs at 15K to half marathon pace that gradually go up in distance that you hold that, that tempo pace. Uh, and then towards the end of the plan, you start working in some repeats, some VO2 max stuff at 5K, 10K pace. So a nice variety of runs, and, and it really is pretty logical in what's included. And like I said, I'm, I, I would give you more detail, but I don't think it'd be a good idea because, one, don't want to do the whole violate any, any copyrighted information, and also just encourage you to, to seek out the book and, and do more than just follow the plan. Here in part three of this video, I just wanted to discuss what it was like for me to actually do this plan, what my experience was like executing this plan. And the reason I chose it was because uh, I did a marathon and I, I didn't have a very structured plan. I just kind of did a lot of miles. I threw some marathon long runs in there, some marathon pace stuff, some, some faster stuff. Uh, it didn't have much of a structure, but I was able to get a Boston qualifier, uh, and I was happy with that. But once I qualified for Boston and signed up, I wanted to do something a little more structured and, and really try to hit a goal and have a better race there and see what I was capable of. My experience with this training plan is is I really liked the the variety of runs and, and the paces that it put me through, and, and it helped me feel prepared for race day. It, I did feel strong and confident going into it, but of course there was some bumps in the road. It was it was kind of difficult to fit in some of the runs. Like if you're going to go do a 15 mile run in a, in a weekday on a Wednesday after work, you kind of maybe not want to do that. And it can be very tiring. 
and, and to fit everything in there, you're, you're also doing eight mile, 10 mile runs throughout the day, throughout the week, workouts, take a lot of time in your weekends to hit those long runs. And, and so it, it was very time consuming. The middle of the training plan when I was hitting those 70 mile weeks, I was feeling pretty tired. So it, it definitely wasn't wasn't easy to execute. There was there was some tough weeks in there, especially through the winter with the snow and the wind and the rain and, and cold and, and everything, you know, and the darkness. So it was it was yeah, some dark weeks, let's just say that. Towards the end of the training plan, I, I did start to feel a little better, less tired during that last two, three weeks of taper period. It really wasn't probably till I'd say the last week and a half, <laughs> I started to feel fresh and maybe that was just me struggling with it or or just um, just how it's supposed to work. Uh, this is really the first time I followed a set plan for a marathon, so wasn't exactly sure. But it definitely requires commitment. It's probably gonna make you tired, it makes you hungry. But at the end of it, I felt pretty strong and confident going going into my race. Another thing I want to discuss real quick was just this 12-week plan as opposed to the 18-week plan. Uh, my experience is I've been uh, distance running since I was 11 years old, over 20 years. I've done 60, 70 mile weeks. I prior ran a marathon. I felt in pretty good shape going into this training cycle. I think the 12-week plan is really for experienced runners and, and people who, who may have run marathons in the past, who are used to the 60, 70 mile weeks. I'm not a coach, but... If I'm, if I'm not experienced with marathons, if I've never done that kind of mileage, I would gradually build into it, follow a 16, 18 week plan and really give yourself enough time to, to, to get comfortable with that mileage and, and know that you can handle it. That 12 week plan, I think it's for somebody who, who knows their body is, is comfortable with that mileage and, and kind of knows what they're doing. So that's just, I just want to discuss that real quick before moving on to the next segment. Now it's time for part four. I'm sure the part you've all been waiting for where I discuss how this ended up working out for me in the end, how I executed it in my marathon. And, well, I'm sorry. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that because, like I said, I'm going to make another video after this discussing more detail what, uh, how the training plan worked out for me, what my Boston 2022 experience was like. But what I will say Going into the marathon, I felt strong in shape, pretty confident. During my buildup, I almost set, I was one second off my half marathon PR with basically a two or three day taper. Um, and that was unexpected. So I was in real good shape. You know, like my resting heart rate is down to like 45. It, it's it's insane. I, I felt like the plan got me into real good shape. And I was able to to run well uh, in some other races with, with a minimal taper uh, and not much focus on those races. So I, I am happy about that. But like I said, I'm not going to go and, and tell you how it all ultimately worked out in the end. I'll just say it made me feel good shape, strong and confident going into it. And it, it was good to have a plan to follow uh, rather than my first marathon where I just kind of did whatever. Okay, folks, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Um, I hope maybe you learned a little bit of something about that Fitz and Gary 1270 plan. I'm no expert, I'm no coach, but I just wanted to discuss uh, my, my experience with it. And I definitely recommend that you read the Advanced Marathoning book because it's just about more than following a plan. There's a lot of information in that about different aspects of marathon training and distance running in general, such as nutrition, recovery, cross training, uh, core exercises, uh, it, race day strategy, recovery after race day. There's all kinds of stuff in that book. And it's about more than just following a training plan. It's about understanding that training plan. And I think that's that's really important uh, if, if you want to set big goals for marathoning and, and achieve, those, achieve those goals. Now, uh, stick around. I'm going to have another video uh, where I'm just going to discuss more in detail my Boston race, how the training plan ultimately worked out, and I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Let's run out of here.